Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. In this video, we'll be using the techniques we learned to solve linear equations to find the value of constants. So this is a slightly different type of problem, but it depends on the theory which we learned in the previous videos. So look at this. We are given a system of equations. And you can see that there are some unknown quantities here, lambda. And now they are going to ask you to find the value of lambda. And it will be given, this system has a solution. Or the question will be like, for what value of lambda will we be able to solve this system of linear equation? Anyway, we start as usual. Uh, we go for the system AX is equal to B. In your exams, you are supposed to define what is A, what is X, what is B. But we had been doing this for the last three videos, so I am not going to waste your time. So we start directly with the augmented matrix A, B. So the augmented matrix will be C is equal to 1, 1, 1 and of course the right side is 1, 1, 2, 4 and the right side is lambda and 1, 4, 10 and finally we have lambda square. We can check the question once more. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 4 lambda and 1, 4, 10 lambda square and we proceed as usual. So, we are planning to reduce this into echelon form. So, the first element should be made 1. No, 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 no. It's already 1, so you don't have to worry about it. Now, we have to make all the elements beneath that 1 into zeros. So, the operations are R2 changes to R2 minus R1. And R3 changes to R3 minus R1. Though there will be no change in the first row, so I am going to write as such. Now we have 0, 2 minus 1, 1, 4 minus 1, 3 and lambda minus 1. And again 0, 4 minus 1, 3 and 9 and lambda square minus 1. Row. And I find the first non-zero element, again it is 1. So, my job is to make the element just beneath it into 0. So, I hope you are ready with the operation. Look at this. My target is in the third row. So, I write R3 changes to R3 minus 3R2 because my 1 is over here. So, 1, 1, 1, 1. There will be no change in first row as well as second row. 1, 3 and then lambda minus 1. Now we have 0 minus 0, 3 minus 3, 9 minus 3 times this, that's going to be 0 and then we have to be a little bit careful here. Lambda square minus 1 minus 3 times lambda minus 1 and that will be lambda square minus 3 lambda minus 1 and plus 3 that will be plus 2. Okay, I can factorize this. Lambda minus 1 into lambda minus 2. So, I will write the simplified version over here. Lambda minus 2. So, I hope you are okay up to this. So, take a look at this. We have our reduced matrix over here or we wrote the augmented matrix and reduced it into echelon form. Now I am going to write rank of C. So till now things were as usual. Now rank of C is, okay I can see 1, 2, by the way how many non-zero rows are there? I think some of you said 3 non-zero rows. No, 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 no. The non-zero rows are only 2 or is it 3? I am confused. 
I am confused because I can see 0, 0, 0 and I can see a factor which depends on lambda. It is not a pure constant, it depends on lambda. So if lambda minus 1 into lambda minus 2 is not equal to 0, suppose this is not equal to 0, then the rank of C will be equal to 3. I hope you got that point. Now, if this value is equal to 0, then rank of C will be equal to 2. Anyway, let's discuss about that part a little bit later. Now, let's go for rank of A. Rank of A means you have to forget about the last column. Okay, so rank of A is extremely clear. Rank of A is equal to 2 because I can see that two non-zero rows are there and the last row is completely zero. So the rank of A is 2. Now the question is when will the system have a solution? Remember a system having solution means the system should be consistent. And consistent stands for both unique solution and infinite solution. Now take a look at this. Rank of A is 2. And the condition for consistency is rank of C is equal to rank of A. Now this is possible only if rank of C is also equal to 2. So we have to make rank of C is equal to 2. And I told you earlier rank of C will be 2 provided this quantity is equal to 0. Okay, I will repeat once more. Rank of A is definitely equal to 2. And the question is when will the system become consistent? And we know that a system will be consistent provided rank of A is equal to rank of C. So that means we want rank of C to be equal to 2. And that is possible only if lambda minus 1 into lambda minus 2 is equal to 0. That means if lambda is equal to 1 or if lambda is equal to 2, then our rank A and rank C will be equal and hence there will be a solution, actually infinite number of solutions. So that's it. So our answer is for a solution, lambda should be equal to 1 or lambda should be equal to 2. Okay, now look at this. They might ask one more question. They might ask, if you are able to solve, then solve the equations completely. And now what we do is, we will put lambda equal to 1. Now, if lambda equal to 1, then this matrix becomes 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 3, 0, and 0, 0, 0, of course, 0. So the equations are x plus y plus z equal to 1 and y plus 3z is equal to 0 and no more. Now you know the theory very well. In the last video I explained if number of unknowns equal to 3 and the common rank value is equal to 2 then n minus r that is equal to 1. 1 value, one unknown can be given any arbitrary value. So I am going to put z equal to k. Immediately I will get y is equal to, yeah, tell me what will be the value of y minus 3k and x will be, you get x plus k minus 3k and that will be 1 plus 2k. Okay, now what we do next is we put lambda equal to 2. So this is the first set of solution and now for the second set of solution what we do is lambda equal to 2 and for the time being I will erase this 
and this I will simply write lambda equal to 1. Now if lambda equal to 2 our matrix becomes 1 1 1 1 and then 0 1 3 2 minus 1 is 1 0 0 0 of course 0. So the equations are x plus y plus z equal to 1 y plus 3 z equal to 1 and like before I am going to put z equal to c and that gives me y equal to 1 minus 3 c and 1 minus and 1 and 1 will get cancelled so x will be equal to 2 c. So look at this, this is how we solve in each case. So that is it, now let us check out one more problem and that is also very important. So please write the question, okay the question is like this, find the values of lambda and mu. So the question goes like this, find the values of lambda and mu so that the system of equations have the first part no solution and what do you mean by no solution yeah exactly inconsistent the second one what is the condition for lambda and mu so that they end up with unique solution and the third one infinite solution so I hope you understood the question you have to find lambda as well as mu so that this system of equations will have no solution, unique solution and infinite number of solutions. So as usual we start with Ax is equal to b and in your exam you are supposed to define Ax and b but now let us not waste time we will start directly from the augmented matrix and what do you mean by augmented matrix we combine A and B so we get 1 1 1 and a 6 and then 1 2 3 and then 10 and then 1 2 lambda and our mu let us confirm it once more 1 1 1 6 1 2 3 10 1 2 lambda and mu okay now as usual let us go for the matrix operations it is very easy the first element is already 1 we have to make these two 0 so r2 minus r1 and r3 changes to R3 minus R1. So we get 1, 1, 1 and a 6 and 1 minus 1, 0, 2 minus 1, 1, 2, 4 and again 0, 1, lambda minus 1 and mu minus 6. Okay. So first element is 1 and all the elements beneath that are 0. Now I go to the second one and find it is already 1. So all I have to do is I have to make this 0. I will try to do it here itself. So the operation will be R3 changes to R3 minus R2. So 1, 1, 1 and a 6 and 0, 1, 2 and a 4 and 0, 0, lambda minus 3 and mu minus 10. Okay, that is it. So we have our matrix, I mean the augmented matrix being reduced into echelon form. So let us try to write the answer for the first part. The first part is we should have no solution. In no solution, I hope you remember the condition, rank of C should be not equal to rank of A. And now for a fact, we know that C will be a bigger matrix than A because C is the bigger matrix and A is a sub matrix. So basically if there will be no solution then 
rank of C will be bigger than that of rank of A. So I'm going to create that. So what I do is I'll put mu minus 10 not equal to 0. And I will take lambda minus 3 to be equal to 0. So think about it. If mu minus 10 is not equal to 0, then mu not equal to 10 and lambda is equal to 3. So our matrix changes into 1, 1, 1, 6, 0, 1, 2 and then 4 and this will become 0, 0, 0 and some non-zero quantity. So now rank of C is equal to 3 and rank of A is equal to 2 and that means the system will have no solution. I hope you are okay with this. Now look at this, the second part. In the second part, they asked the values of lambda and mu so that we have unique solution. Now, I hope you remember the condition for unique solution. Rank of A is equal to rank of C is equal to number of unknowns. And the only quantity which is not in our control is number of unknowns. So this should be equal to 3. And that means we should maintain rank of A and rank of C to be equal to 3. And you can do it in a very easy manner by just keeping lambda minus 3 not equal to 0. And this can be anything. This can be anything. Think about it. This quantity should be not equal to 0. And if this quantity is not equal to 0, then rank of C automatically becomes 3. Because there will be 3 non-zero rows. And rank of A, of course, becomes 3. Because rank of A depends only on this punch part. And this is not equal to 0. So the condition is very simple. Lambda should be not equal to 3. Okay. Now, in the third part, they asked us the condition for infinite solution. I hope you remember the condition for infinite solution. Rank of A should be equal to rank of C. And this common value, let's say the common value is R, should be less than the number of unknowns. Now look at this. The number of unknowns is not in our control. It's already given, it's given to be 3. So we want the common rank to be less than 3. Now look at this. The first row is made up of numbers. The second row is made up of numbers. So our rank can never go below 2. So what we do is we find lambda and mu so that the common rank becomes 2. So it's very easy. You put lambda equal to 3 and you put mu equal to 10 so that the last row will vanish. We'll get something like 1, 1, 1, 6, 0, 1, 2, 4 and 0, 0, 0, 0. So what's the rank of C? That is equal to 2. And what's the rank of A? That's also equal to 2. And 2 is less than 3. And this is the condition for infinite solution. So that's it my friends and remember these two questions are like really important for your exam. Okay so get any book of your choice and get any book which you like and try to solve a lot of questions of this kind. Soon I'll be back with another video and in that video we'll be learning about the characteristic equation Cayley Hamilton theorem and eigenvalues. So till then, my friends, bye.